Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Try to stay right here. Make up your mind you're going to be here and then learn how to depend on yourself. In other words, keep looking after the mind, looking after the breath in as steady a way as you can. Because as the Buddha said, you make yourself your refuge through mindfulness, remembering to stay here. Stay where you, the mind should be, right at the breath. Because when the mind gets a sense of well-being from being with the breath, then it's a lot easier to develop other good qualities inside as well. We know there are lots of good things we should do, but if you don't have the energy to do them, then that knowledge doesn't really have much power. But if you've got the energy and the knowledge, then it's a lot easier to do the things you know you should do, even though they can be difficult sometimes. And that's when you can rely on yourself. If you do only the things you want to do and don't do the things you don't want to do, that means you're a slave to your desires. You can't depend on yourself, and you certainly can't depend on them to give any good, good guidance. So you're left exposed. But if you can train the mind so that you know that something that you like to do but it's going to give bad results, you know how to say no. Something you don't like to do but it's going to give good results, you learn how to say yes. You go ahead and do it. That's going to require strength. But when you have the strength that comes from the mind that's settled in, the mind that's firmly established, then it's a lot easier to do those things. And you find that you can rely on yourself. So the Buddha kept telling the monks, make yourself your refuge, make yourself your island. And you do that by making mindfulness your refuge, mindfulness your island. Mindful of what? Well, mindful of what you should be doing right now. What's skillful and what's not skillful, and then looking to see, being alert to see what's actually going on in the mind. Recognizing what's skillful, recognizing what's not skillful. then encouraging the things that are skillful and discouraging the things that are not. That way you're in charge, your discernment is in charge. And your desires don't have to learn how to obey your discernment. That's when you're safe. 